Hi everyone. Welcome back to chapter called Principles of Inheritance and Variation. Or in other words if you say it is a sudden heritable change in the gene. Pedigree analysis is very very important for a human being. Here the first one represents the parents and the second here this represents the offspring. Based on that we use the word called chromosomal disorder, down syndrome. All these are the ones which we are going to Welcome back to chapter called Principles of Inheritance and Variation. What are we going to study in today's session? Then we are going to discuss about a very important concept called mutation then about pedigree analysis. So what are the two very important concepts we are going to discuss in today's session? We are going to discuss about what is mutation? What are the types of mutation? What are the causes for mutation? And also we are going to study about pedigree analysis, right? Moving on to the next slide. Here you can see what is mutation, right? What are the types of mutation? What is mutation then? Mutation is a spontaneous and permanent change in the genetic makeup that will alter the character of an individual. So how do we define this word called mutation? Or in other words, if you say it is a sudden heritable change in the gene and mutation may be beneficial or harmful to human mankind. So what is mutation? Mutation is a spontaneous, continuous and permanent change in the genetic makeup that is going to alter the character of an individual. So according to one scientist by name Dobjgensi, according to this scientist, mutation is called as a mistake or it is called as a misprint. Accord, what is according to Dobjensi? Mutation is a mistake or it is a misprint during cell division. During cell division. I repeat what is mutation? Mutation is a spontaneous and permanent change in the genetic makeup and that is going to alter the character of an individual. And according to one scientist by name Dobjensi, mutation is a mistake or it is a misprint during cell division. We may wonder what are the causes for mutation? Mutation may be caused due to errors in the gene duplication errors in the du gene duplication or may be due to environmental factors environmental factors so that is there are many reasons or many causes for the occurrence of a mutation and one such is one such is due to the errors in the gene duplication or maybe due to environmental factors so what are the environmental factors it may be due to chemicals or it may be due to exposure to radiations. May be due to exposure to radiation. So what is mutation? It is a spontaneous permanent change in the genetic makeup that is going to alter the character of an individual. So according to Dobjensi, what are mutagens referred to as? They are referred to as a mistake or a misprint during uh, cell division. And what are the causes for the occurrence of mutation? There are many uh, uh, causes and it may be due to uh, error in the gene duplication or may be due to environmental factors like chemicals and radiations. If at all the mutant gene is found in the somatic cell that is the body cell then it is not of much evolutionary significance but if the mutant gene is in the germ cell or right or the reproductive cell which is uh, passed on from generation to generation then definitely it is of evolutionary significance. I repeat if the mutant gene is found in the somatic cell then it is not of much significance for evolution. But if at all the mutant gene is seen in the germ cell which is passed on from generation to generation definitely then it is of evolutionary significance. Hence we say mutation are the raw materials for evolution. So mutation is the raw materials for 
evolution. Hope you have understood the definition of mutation and what is mutation according to Dobjensi and what are the causes or the reasons for the occurrence of mutation. It may be due to errors in the gene duplication or it may be due to environmental factors like chemicals, uh, like chemicals and for and radiations. And as I said, if the mutant genes are found in the somatic cells, it is not of much evolutionary significance. But if the mutant genes are found in the germ cells or the sex cells which are passed on from generation to generation, then definitely it is of evolutionary significance. Hence we say what? Mutations are, mutation is the raw material for evolution, right? Now what are the types of mutation? There are three types of mutation. One is called point mutation. Second one is called chromosomal mutation and the third one is called frame shift frame shift mutation so you have understood what is mutation what are the types of mutation point mutation point mutation is also called as gene mutation and chromosomal mutation and frame shift mutation. Now let us study one by one. What is point mutation? The mutation that takes place at the gene level. The mutation that takes place at the gene level is called point mutation or gene mutation or it is the mutation caused due to the change in the single base pair of our nucleotide sequence of a DNA molecule. If at all there are any changes in the nucleotide sequence of a DNA molecule then it will lead to point mutation. So what is point mutation? What are the types of mutation? There are three types of mutation. One is called point mutation, chromosomal mutation and frame shift mutation. As I said, the point mutation is nothing but the mutation that occurs at the gene level or it is the mutation caused due to the change in the nucleotide sequence of a DNA molecule. Example, you can take sickle cell anemia. And this sickle cell anemia is due to what? Is due to the replacement of glutamic acid by valine. So the glutamic as I said it is a change in the nucleotide sequence of a DNA molecule where one that is the glutamic acid is replaced by valine right and such a type of mutation is called point mutation. Hope you have understood what is point mutation. Moving on to the next the very word itself will tell you chromosomal mutation that is if the mutation takes place in the chromosomal number as we know the chromosomal number so as i said if the chromosome that the mutation if it takes place at the chromosomal level what do you mean by chromosomal at the level of chrom chromosomal number chromosomal number what do you mean by chromosomal number as you know, the, uh, the nucleus of a cell will have balanced set of chromosomes. For example, you take human beings. In human beings, the chromosomal number is 46. This is called diploid number. So the nucleus of a cell will always have what? Balanced set of chromosomes called 46 chromosomes. If at all this balanced set of chromosome to this balanced set of chromosome, either there is an addition or deletion of a chromosome from the normal set of uh, chromosome that will lead to what? Chromosomal mutation. Or, or it may also be called as, it may lead to abnormalities or anomalies. Or also we use a word called syndromes. So the cause of change in the chromosomal number the mutation which takes place at the chromosomal number will lead to what? Syndromes or anomalies or abnormalities. That is either deletion or addition to the normal set of chromosome will, will happen in this type of mutation. For example, it might be 46 minus 1, it may be 45 or 46 plus 1 that is 47. So this is called a, 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 and as I said it will lead to what we call it as aneuploidy it will lead to aneuploidy. Aneuploidy means what? Aneuploidy is nothing but unbalanced set of chromosome. So what do you mean? This is called balance. This is called euploidy. Balanced set of chromosome is called euploidy. Unbalanced set of chromosome is called aneuploidy. Why is this unbalanced set caused? Either as I said this is called 2n. 2n minus 1 or 2n plus 1. 2n minus that is 46 minus 1 is equal to 45 and 46 plus 1 is equal to 47. 
so it is not a normal chromosomal number as i said it will lead to what it will lead to syndromes as we call it as syndromes or we also use a word called abnormalities such a type of mutation is called chromosomal mutation moving on to the next one called frame shift mutation again there is a change in the sequence of dna and such type of uh, uh, mutation is called as frame shift mutation hope you have understood what are the types of mutation so what are the types of mutation one is called what is mutation it is nothing but a spontaneous and permanent change in the genetic makeup that is going to alter the character of an individual what are the types of mutation three types what are they point mutation chromosomal uh, point mutation is also called as what gene mutation and the other one is called uh, chromosomal uh, mutation and the third one is called frame shift mutation moving on to the next very important concept called pedigree analysis this pedigree analysis is very very important for a human being to analyze the traits in the the traits that is going to occur in a family right and the traits may be sometimes may be of beneficial traits or sometimes it might be even some genetic disorders also so what is this pedigree analysis pedigree analysis is the study of inheritance of a particular trait or a character in several generation of humans so what is pedigree analysis it is the analysis analysis of the study of what study of inheritance of a particular trait in several generations of human beings now what is the significance of pedigree analysis why it is so very important as i said it is very important for us because uh, due to this pedigree analysis we can trace the inheritance of a particular trait we can trace the trait of the, of a particular inheritance of a particular trait in a family or it might sometimes it might be the trait might be an abnormality or it might be a disease or genetic disorder in a family so this analysis will definitely help a, a family member to overcome such genetic disease so this is nothing but analysis pedigree analysis and we we also use a word called family tree as you know certain traits or uh, diseases are passed on from one generation to another generation sometimes it might be an abnormality or it might be a genetic disorder right so those traits or those uh, characters may be passed on or inherited from generation to generation in a family but this pedigree analysis will help us to trace out the inheritance of those traits or even the abnormalities or even the diseases in the family right so here we use certain symbols so this you can see here the symbol for male this is pedigree analysis genetic shortcuts and the tricks that is uh, used here so here you can see the male is represented by a square and that too it is a normal male this is a normal male this is a normal female so you can understand the pedigree analysis with certain symbols so what are the symbols used here square for male and a circle for female that too it is not tainted here you can see it is completely shaded so this is affected male so completely shaded square is affected male and completely shaded circle is an affected female and you can see here there is a line over the square that means to say diseased male means carrier carrier male also carrier male this is a carrier female carrier female anyhow in the uh, next slide you are going to see what are the symbols that are used to study this pedigree analysis so what is pedigree analysis pedigree analysis is the study of inheritance of a particular trait in several generation of human so what is the significance of pedigree analysis this is used to trace the inheritance of particular trait or abnormality or a disease in a family now these are the symbols used to study the pedigree analysis as i said the square represents what male the circle represents what female and this triangle will represent sex unspecified here you can see the affected individuals this is affected male this is affected male and this is affected female and this is affected sex unspecified 
I repeat, what is the symbol? It is square is representing what? Male. Circle is unshaded. Circle is unshaded. Square is representing male. And unshaded uh, circle is representing female. This triangle, unshaded triangle is representing what? Uh, as, uh, which is, uh, this is sex unspecified. Here, affected male, affected female, and affected sex unspecified. This is marriage. This is mating means marriage between a male and a female between a male this is this is male and this is female and that to normal normal marriage between a normal male and a normal female normal male and normal female right here we can see marriage between the relatives Marriage between the relatives, like for example, uh, uh, you come across in a family uh, marrying a mother's uh, brother, uh, right? So father's uh, sister's uh, son, so or a daughter. So that is called marriage between relatives. It is also called as what? Congenitious uh, marriage, or it is called congenitious uh, mating. So here you can see this is called the marriage between the relatives. If this symbol is used, that is, you can see two lines over this. So that means it is a marriage between relatives. Here, parents, here you can see this one and this one. This is parents. These are parents. The above ones are parents and the below ones are children. Here, these are the parents. That is father and this is mother. Normal father and normal uh, mother. And here you can see that is the female child and the male child, normal. Why we call it as normal? Because it is not shaded. Here you can see father, parents, father and mother, father and mother. Father is normal, mother is also normal, but the son is affected. The sun is affected. How do we say that the sun is affected? You can see here it is shaded. Here it is not shaded means what? The, the first one represents parents and the second one represents the, represents the offsprings. Right? Here you can see the normal father, normal mother, but sometimes even uh, they may have this affected son. And this is phi an unaffected offspring. Hope you have understood this uh, symbols. So once again, normal male, Normal female, sex unspecified, affected individuals, that is affected male, affected uh, female, affected uh, uns uh, that is sex unspecified and this is a marriage, be uh, normal marriage between a normal male and a normal female and this is a marriage, this is a symbol used to represent the marriage between the relatives and here the first one represents the parents and the second here this represents the offsprings. And that both are normal. Even the parents are normal and the offsprings are normal. Here the parents are normal. This symbol represents what? Parents are normal. But and that too, this is a sun. Square means sun affected. If it was circle shaded like this, then it would have been female. That is daughter affected. But here it is square. Square. So it is sun is affected. And phi unaffected offspring. This is called phi is represented and this is called phi unaffected offspring. Moving on to the now let us study this pedigree analysis with an example of autosomal dominant trait. Here we find that the unaffected individuals the unaffected individuals may also lead to, uh, may not have unaffected offsprings. Here you can see that the affected individuals, affected, sorry, affected parents may have affected individuals. Here it is affected individuals, affected parents, affected individuals. Here unaffected parents and unaffected, unaffected, uh, the unaffected children, right? And what now let us see one by one what are the features of this. So as I said, affected parents may also have unaffected also. Here you can see both affected and unaffected. That is affected parents may have unaffected children. 
second one the phenotype appears every generation appears every generation and third one you can see that the traits are controlled by dominant genes and unaffected parents may produce unaffected children see here affected parents may produce unaffected that is affected parents may produce unaffected children and unaffected parents may produce unaffected children right and as i said traits are controlled by dominant genes and here traits do not skip next fifth point is traits do not skip generations don't find any skipping in the generations here next number of males and females affected are equal are equal so what are the features of autosomal dominant here you can see that is here female is affected and male is normal but what about their children you can see they are uh, they are affected right so what are the features of autosomal dominant trait how do we analyze this pedigree analysis as i said first point is what affected parents may have unaffected children and the phenotype appears after every generation and the traits are controlled by dominant genes and unaffected parents may produce what unaffected children and as i said traits do not skip generation and the number of males and females affected are equal so what are the examples you are going to give for this example is polyductile polyductile is a, a very good example for this autosomal dominant trait right you can give also one example of tongue rolling ability tongue rolling ability so what are the examples for occurrence of autosomal dominant uh, uh, trait that uh, trait that is polyductile that is tongue rolling ability so what are the features of this autosomal dominant trait here you can see the affected parents may have unaffected children and the phenotype appears every generation and traits are controlled by dominant genes and unaffected parents may produce what unaffected children then the next is traits do not skip generation and number of males and females affected are equal what are the examples you are going to give polyductile and tongue rolling ability are the examples for autosomal dominant trait moving on to the next that is autosomal recessive trait autosomal recessive trait so here you can see that the unaffected unaffected parents one is unaffected parents may produce affected offspring or affected children right and here the traits are controlled by recessive genes there it was dominant genes here it is recessive genes and can appear when homo zygous here also we find that both males and females are males and females are equally affected males and females are equally affected here you can see that is the parents are unaffected but the children are affected so and as you said this is controlled by recessive trait and that too which appear when homozygous males and females are equally affected that is they occur in the ratio of 3 is to 1 is the ratio between the normal and affected 
is obtained. So what is the ratio? The ratio is 3 is to 1 ratio between what? Between the normal and the affected is obtained. And very important is that is traits may skip generations. Traits may skip generations. So what are the features of this uh, uh, autosomal recessive trait? How do we analyze the pedigree analysis for autosomal recessive trait? That is unaffected parents may produce affected children and traits are controlled by recessive genes which can appear when homozygous and males and females are equally affected. Next the very important is they occur in the ratio of what 3 is to 1 that is 3 is to 1 is the ratio between the normal and the affected is obtained. Traits may skip generations there in autosomal uh, dominant traits traits do not skip generations right now what are the examples you are going to give for this albinism then sickle cell anemia hope you know what is sickle cell anemia that is sickle cell anemia means the rbc cells will be half moon shape so it hence the name sickle it will be in the form of a sickle shape hence it is called uh, sickle cell anemia so these are the traits or these are the characteristic features of autosomal recessive trait now moving on to the types of genetic disorders so the genetic uh, disorders or the genetic uh, what i say the genetic disorders in human is studied under a specialized branch called human genetics studied as human genetics so what is this human genetics as i said the genetic disorders are studied in a specialized branch called human genetics which deals with the study of inheritance of characters in human which deals with the study of inheritance of characters in human hence the name it is called human genetics so the genetic disorders are studied under a specialized branch called human genetics which is a branch of uh, science which deals with the study of inheritance of characters in humans and we classify the genetic disorders into two types that is one is called the Mendelian disorder the other one is called chromosomal disorder so what first let us see what are genetic disorders these are the disorders that are caused due to inheritance of change or altered genes or chromosomes right so it is due to the change in the gene hence the name genetic disorder or it is also called as what altered genes or chromosomes as i said there are two types of genetic disorders one is called mendelian disorder and the other one is called um, chromosomal disorder mendelian disorder is also called as monogenic disease it is also called as monogenic disease right now let us see what is this what are the examples we go, give we give for mendelian disorders the examples which we can give for mendelian disorders are hemophilia then sickle cell anemia third one is color blindness What is color blind as a person is not able to distinguish red and green color right so hemophilia is an example for the mendelian disorders it is also uh, sickle cell anemia is also an example color blindness then we call it as thalassemia right all these are some of the examples for mendelian disorders so what are genetic disorders as i said it is a disorder in the gene sequence in the sequence of a dna right hence the name it is called genetic disorders right and as such there are two types of disorders one is called mendelian disorder the other one is called chromosomal disorder mendelian disorder is also called as monogenic disease right and what are the examples we are going to give and what is this mendelian disorder it is the disorder that is going to take place in the sequence of a gene that is in a gene of a uh, chromosome and hence we call it as mendelian disorders what are chromosomal disorders Disorders. as I said the change that is going to take place in the chromosomal number as I said the um, uh, the chromosomal number is constant for a particular species so it should be always a balanced set of chromosome neither there should be an addition or deletion to the normal set of chromosome if at all there is an addition or deletion to the normal uh, 
set of chromosome, then it is going to lead to what we call it as chromosomal disorders. For example, like we can take that example of Klinefelter syndrome, Down syndrome, then uh, Turner syndrome. So this addition or deletion of a chromosome may also take place to an autosome or to an allosome. As you have already studied in the previous session, what are the two types of chromosomes you come across? The one is called autosome, that is the body chromosomes or the somatic chromosomes. The other one is the allosomes or the sex chromosomes. So that addition or deletion of the chromosome may take place either to an autosome or to an allosome. Based on that, we use the word called chromosomal disorders. And the classical example for chromosomal disorders are Down syndrome, Klinefelter syndrome, Turner's syndrome. There's one more called Kreidu-Chad syndrome. So you can see the change in the chromosomal number here. Right. So as you know, 23 pairs. 23 pairs means 22 pairs are common. That is 22 pairs are called autosomes. That is 44 chromosomes are called autosomes. Whereas one pair, the difference lies in the one pair of chrome. That is XX in case of female and XY in case of male. So it will be like this. 44 plus XX that is equal to 46 that is in female. 44 plus XY that is equal to 46 is in case of male. So this is the chromosomal complement how we write for a balanced set of chromosome. Right? Next. So Mendelian disorders, as I said, what is our one very good example? That is hemophilia, sickle cell anemia, color blindness, cystic fibrosis, phenyl ketonuria, and thalassemia are the example. As I said, what are Mendelian disorders? These are the disorders that are mainly determined by alteration or mutation in a single gene. As I said, that is an, hence the name Mendelian disorder. These are the disorders that are mainly determined by alteration or mutation in a single gene. So the concept of gene was put across by whom? By Mendel. Actually, he did not know what is gene. According to Mendel, genes were nothing but called as what? Factors. Later on, these factors were called as what? Gene. Hence, this disorder itself is called as Mendelian disorder. That is, these are the disorders that are mainly determined by alteration or mutation in a single gene. What are the examples you are going to give? Hemophilia, sickle cell anemia, color blindness, cystic fibrosis, phenylketonuria and thalassemia. Hemophilia, you might have come across, the, uh, the blood will fail to clot. As you know, if at all there is an injury, there is oozing of blood and immediately it clots. So when the blood comes in contact with the atmospheric oxygen it clots but in case of hemophilia there is an absence or uh, less number of clotting factors which may lead to continuous uh, bleeding uh, during uh, the injury so that is called hemophilia right so here you can see sometimes the father might be a carrier and mother might be a carrier but here you can see the individuals born here here is unaffected son carrier daughter here whenever we see small r that will be a carrier right wherever we come across as you know genes capital r capital r right here one is small r means it is a carrier father here also you can see carrier son then here affected daughter where both are small r and small r here you can see r so the green color indicates that is the mother is a carrier here r small r represents what from this side it is a father who is a carrier of the trait Hope you have understood what is Mendelian disorder. These are the disorders that are mainly determined by alteration or mutation in a single gene. Why it is called as Mendelian disorders? As I said, according to Mendel, genes were nothing but the factors. Later, the factors were named as what? Gene. Hence the name Mendelian disorder. What are the examples you are going to give for Mendelian disorders? Hemophilia, sickle cell anemia, color blindness, cystic fibrosis, phenylketonuria, thalassemia, which we am going to discuss in the coming session. So how Hope you have understood uh, in this session that is about what is mutation, what are the types of uh, mutation. Then we also studied about pedigree analysis with two examples, uh, analysis of uh, that is pedigree analysis with autosomal dominant trait and autosomal recessive trait. Hope you have understood all the concepts what I have explained in today's session. So what am I going to deal in the next session? The continuing in the last session of this chapter called Principles of Inheritance and Variation which will be about hemophilia in detail with an example. As you know, hemophilia is also called as royal disease. We'll get to know why it is called as a royal disease, why it is called as even bleeder's disease also. Then we are going to study about what is the reason for the cause of sickle cell anemia.
anemia then what is the cause what is phenyl ketoacetate it is also called as pku ediates right so why it is called pku ediates and why what is the cause of phenyl ketonuria and also we are going to study about the chromosomal disorders that is about the with suitable examples like turner syndrome klinefelter syndrome right then down syndrome all these are the ones which we are going to study hope you have understood all the concepts what i have explained in today's session so till we meet in the coming session thank you and goodbye